Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here and welcome to the Photoshop Virtual Summit 2. That's right, it is the sequel and I'm very excited to be back among so many great instructors. It's gonna be a fun week of learning and I hope you have enjoyed it so far. Now this course is called Wordography. We're gonna be artistically blending text with photos. It's really just a fancy way of saying we're gonna be compositing text and images. Uh, but we're gonna be taking it um, few different approaches here. We're going to be starting with some basic masking where we're going to just talk about how you can uh, take basic shapes and photos and blend them in a very interesting way quickly and easily. Then we're going to move on to some optical effects using layer styles. Now this is a very interesting result I got when I was experimenting and it really yields some interesting results. Really fun to play around with uh, on a variety of, uh, of different images. And then we're going to go into some edge lighting effects and how we can blend text elements in a photo and make it look like they're illuminated and as if they were actual props that were on the set when they were being shot. We're going to create edge lighting effects on our subjects and everything. And then we're going to move on to a 3D exercise where we're going to take 3D text and then surround a character or a, a photograph uh, and make it look like they, these elements were all on a set that you actually shot uh, instead of actually being generated from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started and play around with wordography in Photoshop. So one of the key features when blending text with a photographic element is masking. Layer masking is going to be a big key on a lot of the uh, pretty much everything we do in this uh, in this overall course. But in this lesson, I want to do start off rather simple and just give you an idea of how you can get creative very quickly with just a few layer masking tricks to create a, a very uh, interesting effect in the end. Uh, so we're going to start, uh, I've got this image of this violinist right here. It's a very cool shot, I like the angle and the lighting and everything. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually set a text layer and let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to do all caps and let's just do the word violin since that's what it is. And you'll notice it's actually keeping the formatting from my from previously, but you'll notice that the, the tracking is set very close in so that the letters are very close together. If I go over here and select my character panel here, you'll see that that setting is at 120. So it's given me, it's got those elements. Um, Pretty much what I want them is to be able to, is touching each other. So there's kind of a, creates a larger area of the shape there. And I'm uh, gonna go ahead and scale it up. And the font I'm using, of course, is Futura. I use that all the time. So in this particular case, the, the nice, round angular look to it um, really uh, really helps especially because the O is nice uh, almost like a perfect circle so notice I've got the um, the text I mean pretty much edge to edge in the document here and let's go ahead and leave it at that um, now what I want to do is convert it to a shape layer right now it's editable text but to get the effect we want we need to invert the image so that the white is in the background and that the image is showing through in, inside the text there um, so for what we what we need to do here is go in and convert this to a shape layer. Now before I do that, I like to go ahead and just make a duplicate of my working text layer in the event I want to go back and start over or just save it for future use um, uh, for any reason. Uh, it's, it's a bit good idea to just go ahead and make a duplicate. So I'm going to press Command J. And on that duplicate layer, we're going to go and right click on it and simply choose Convert to Shape here and converts it into a regular vector shape layer. Now, if we use our vector tool and select all those elements, uh, you'll see that they're individual shapes. Now, I want to go ahead and combine them into a um, one single object. You notice a lot of them, they're overlapping here. Um, so if we have all the objects selected and go into the Pathfinder menu here, up in the Options bar, and simply choose Merge Shape Components, creates one large shape. Now, I'm going to go back into that same Pathfinder menu and this time choose Subtract Front Shape, it's basically going to invert the image so that the um, image is being seen through the text itself and the, the background is now white. So now what we want to do is we want to, we want to creatively reveal parts of the subject so that there looks like she's, you know, kind of coming through the text there in a way. Um, now before we do that, let's actually turn off our shape layer. I'm going to reselect the background layer, and because this subject is on a uh, relatively simple background, um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Select feature, go under the Select Subject, and it's going to go ahead and create a really accurate selection on that. If you wanted to fine-tune it a little bit, you could simply go in there and choose Select any, any Selection Tool, and then go up in the Options bar and choose Select and Mask. 
and uh, let's actually view this on white. Actually, no, I'm gonna do it on black so I can see. So I can see the edge of the hair there might need a little bit of a touch up with the refine edge brush. So let's just kind of dab in there a little bit, maybe on this side as well. Missed a little area by the sleeve there and everything else looks okay. All right, so we're gonna go down here to the output menu. Let's set this to new layer and go ahead and click okay. And you'll see it goes ahead and uh, creates the new layer, but it also turned off the background layer, uh, which, you know, it assumes you want to just extract the element you want and then, you know, automatically turn that off. Uh, in this case, we want to turn that back on. We are going to position the extracted layer above our shape layer. Now let's go ahead and turn the shape layer back on. And now you can see uh, what we've got going on there. So now want to create a layer mask for this new um, extracted shape layer. So I'm going to hold down the option key as I click on the layer mask icon in the layers panel here, and that's going to create a hide all layer mask. So everything's hidden. You'll notice it filled up with black. And what I want to do now is I'm going to go in here and grab my brush tool and get just a regular round brush, relatively soft edge. Uh, let's see. A little bit softer than that. I guess it really doesn't matter. But, um, now we just want to start painting in areas where we want to bring the subject back into play here. And we're painting, we're essentially painting back in that extracted subject. And obviously larger areas you would want to maybe use a lasso tool and just make a, make a big selection and then just fill the air with white. But it's, it's kind of fun to just kind of paint it in here. And let's just kind of paint around the subject there. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this whole area here. But it's, it's kind of fun to paint and reveal certain areas. Like obviously, this area, I could have just, just made a big selection around it. But uh, it's okay. There we go. But uh, let's go in and do another area. Let's actually bring that sleeve here a little bit. And maybe reveal this hand a little bit more. It's coming through there. And uh, get some of the elbow there. Just kind of reveal just different parts of it, just to kind of uh, have it standing in front of that. Now the the bow here. Let's actually paint these areas here to bring it in front of all those individual lines there. So you see, just kind of creative way of bringing the subject forward um, while still maintaining the uh, the text here. We can still make out what the te text says, but it's all become part of the of the overall piece now. The text is now part of the composition. And that's the whole point here. Is this kind of a, it stands alone as a piece of art, but it also has um, um, the words in there too. And again, I, I chose the simple word violin. I mean, this could be great for uh, hanging in a music store, I guess, or something like that. Um, <laughs> But, um, but you get the idea. Now, one last thing I want to do is add a little bit of a shadow element coming off the subject. Now, if the areas that are in front of the, the shapes here, it would be a little bit more depth, give it a little bit more depth if there was a shadow coming out from that. Um, so I'm going to make a selection based on the extracted subject. So command click on that layer makes an active selection. And let's go make a new layer underneath that active layer. If you hold down the command key, click on the new layer icon, it creates that new layer. And let's fill that with black. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip that this layer in the shape layer below. So Option Command G creates a clipping group for that. Now there's obviously a lot of area of shadow we don't need here. Uh, let's, uh, for instance, this part right here, it's kind of peering up in air. We'll make a selection around that and delete that. And we don't need any of this bottom area here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection around that. Hit Delete there. And it looks like we deleted everything. However, if we press Command or Control T and activate Free Transform, and then I right click on the shape and choose Warp, it's going to allow me to pull <clears throat> to pull that shadow in a distorted way out from underneath there. In fact, if I pull back here, we can uh, reveal some of the hat on the subject there. And you see that the shadow of the bow is coming down there a little bit, and that's just giving us a little bit more depth there. So press enter. Now I'm also going to drop the opacity. Let's drop that down to about 55% perhaps. Maybe put a little bit of a blur on it. And that looks pretty good. Just something to think about when you're building the overall effect and how you can do it. But using that warp feature allows you to pull the shadow 
in more than one direction. That way you can get a little bit more drastic shadow on one end of the image and something a little less dramatic on the other end. Just like that. So it sells the depth of um, where the objects are positioned a little bit better. But ultimately, there you have it. So just a simple way of utilizing layers and layer masking to have the elements interact with each other um, in this uh, very creative way. And it's a fun technique to play around with uh, on a variety of different types of images. Now this technique is is really fun because it was one of those aha moments for me when I was actually started working on it uh, or playing around with it. Uh, I got to a point where I thought, wow, this actually can be used in a variety of ways um, by designers and photographers to create uh, rather interesting optical effects uh, and even glass effects in a way, if you think about it. Once you see how the technique comes together, though, you'll see what I mean. Um, but it starts with a very simple image. Um, You'll obviously, like I said, want to try it on a variety of images once you have the technique down. Uh, but for the sake of demonstration, I have here a very simple subject um, on a very simple, solid background. Um, now, first thing you do when you open your image is you're going to go under the edit menu and go down here and choose define pattern. We want to save this into Photoshop so that we can apply it as a pattern in a layer style in just a minute. Um, Go ahead and name it if you like. Um, I rarely ever name anything, so just go ahead and click OK. And now that image is defined. The entire image is now defined and ready as a pattern. So let's go ahead and bring out our layers panel here. And to start building the effect, I'm going to actually just bring in a very simple shape. We're going to apply it to some text objects a little bit later. Uh, but to, build, to build the effect out, let's go ahead and just do a simple shape. So I'm going to go in my toolbar and let's grab the rectangle shape tool here. Again, make sure in the options bar it's set to shape so it creates a shape layer. And I'm just going to go and draw a box right in the vertical. Uh, it's a vertical box right here over the subject. And you'll see it in the layers panel went ahead and created that layer because it's a, it is a new shape layer. So now we're going to go ahead and apply our layer style. Now you can go in the layer style menu here. We're going to go ahead and add a stroke element. And the stroke is just what it does. It, you know, if we increase the size here, you'll see it just adds an element on the outer edge of the object. I'm going to actually set it to the outside here. And we can adjust the size, change the color, and everything like that. We can also apply different types of uh, fills. We've got the color, of course. We can apply a gradient. We want to get some uh, rather interesting gradient effects. But we can also apply the pattern. And, we, and we're going to go for the pattern we just defined here. Now, before I do that, let's actually move our image so we can see what's going on here. And uh, first thing is up here in the structure settings, let's go ahead and just make the size maxed out to its uh, two, to 250, 250 pixels here. Um, I'm going to leave all these settings that they are outside normal. Let's go in here and actually select our pattern. There it is right there. And you'll want to go ahead and just click snap to origin. Now I don't want to link it with layer. So we're going to uncheck that right down here. Make sure you uncheck that link with layer there and uh, click snap to origin. And it's in, the original position. Now if I go and move my cursor here over the, the canvas and just move, you'll notice we can move that image around on that element. Now it's covering the original subject because we made the stroke very thick, but now we're moving that element around in there. Let's go back to snap to origin there. All right, so now here's the cool part about this technique is that recently they allowed you to create multiple instances of styles here in the layer styles panel. So what I'm going to do is actually go in here and add, click this plus sign. It's going to create a new instance of uh, our current style. But now I'm going to go back here and just dial down the size. Let's bring that size to around 175. Not 170. All right. And uh, if I go back in here and just move this around, you notice now we're getting this kind of offset look. If I increase the scale a little bit, let's go like to 105. And maybe we'll bring that size down a little bit more. But you notice what we're getting here is this kind of offset look, like it's getting multiple layers in there. Let's go ahead and add a, another stroke, bring the scale down, the size down a little bit more, and then push that one over a little bit. So you can vary, like I'm going to go really big on this one. Let's go, it's like 150 on the scale. But you can vary the scale and the position. And, and this is going to be really cool in just a minute when you see. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, add... For the, uh, the actual object shape itself, let's go ahead and add a pattern overlay. And we'll just do the, the exact same thing here. We'll apply the pattern, 
Snap to origin, uncheck link with layer, of course, and then we're snap to origin. So now it's in its original position there. So we've got three instances of the stroke and then a pattern overlay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and just to show you one really cool thing about this. Because it's not linked to the layer, if I go and just move this around, we're getting this really cool kind of multiple layer kind of glass effect in a way. It's like it's refracting in there. And that's merely because of the position of the shape and those stroke elements. The image that's being applied to those strokes is staying in place because we, we uncheck the link it with the layer. And that's giving us that result there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and back into that layer style. I'm gonna add another instance of a stroke uh, here at the bottom here. And I'm actually gonna set this one to the inside. And I don't want it to be quite that large. So let's bring that size down a little bit there. And let's see, there we go. So there's that one there. Let's maybe make that one like 125 maybe. There we go. So worth just playing around with um, these various settings. So I'm gonna go and bring that in there. So now you can see, now it's getting something really interesting going on here. Now I don't wanna see this bottom area here, so I'm actually gonna scale the, the, the vertical height here. So we just get the, uh, the vertical elements there. And what I mean by that is if I move the element where we see the end, notice how it rounds out the edges on it. Now, depending on the design element you're going or the effect you're going for, those rounded elements may actually work for you. So just keep that in mind as you're working with this. But I just wanna see those, uh, those vertical elements. So I'm gonna have those where they just go out. But how cool is that? How it just passes through and gives me that kind of really cool effect there with the, uh, the main subject. Now, let's go back um, to what we were talking about with text. So we've got our style built up. And again, it's a style. We can always go back in here and um, adjust the positioning of any of these elements in here. So if we wanted to make anything uh, considerably smaller or larger, uh, depending on the, the placement of the object, we wanted to move it where maybe there's a face coming in over on this side and it's a lot larger. Maybe it's 150 as well. We position it up higher. I mean, <clears throat> Or maybe you want to emphasize a, certain, a different part of the subject. You know, we're seeing her ear rings, earrings in there. Maybe something like that. Just gives you a lot of freedom to, to play around with the various levels and such like that. So I'm going to go and click OK. Um, so now let's talk about the text. So I'm going to actually turn this layer off for the moment. And let's go ahead and set a text layer. And I'm going to just going to do the letter V here. And you can use, you know, a few letters, one letter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's just, you know, this is worth playing around with. But I'm um, just going to do the letter V here. Now, what I want to do is apply my stroke, my, my style that I built to this text layer. But I want to have a little bit more freedom. And what I discovered was if I just apply the, 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 uh, the layer style to the V as it is, it looks pretty good. And I've had to scale it and play around with everything like that. But I wanted to get a little bit more freedom with it. So here's a cool trick. Instead of applying it to that, because what I want to do is actually apply it to a couple of different versions of the lettering. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that letter V layer. Press Command and Control J. So now we got two instances of that V, and one of them I actually want to rotate. So we kind of got this shape with text kind of thing going on here. But notice what's going on in our layers panel. We've got uh, the two layers and the layer style. Now, I could go ahead and apply the layer style to each individual layer, but the interaction is kind of, it doesn't really work the way I want it to, so it doesn't really give me the result I want. I want to be able to treat this as one element, but still manipulate the individual objects. So select both text layers, and we're going to press Command or Control G and create a group. Puts it in a folder now, and that group can have layer styles applied to it. Uh, so if I twirl down, you'll see that the group does contain just those two letters. But what I'm going to do is actually hold down my Option key, Alt on Windows, and then Option drag to that group layer. And that's going to copy and paste that layer style to that folder. Now if I twirl the folder down, and now if I go in and manipulate any individual elements, it's going to overlap, but it's going to update that style as I reposition those. So I'm going to select the group folder and actually scale it up so that the rounded areas are going outside of the image there. So we scaled the group up. And now if I go in here and move the individual layers, so I've got them both selected, now we can see that we can get um, some rather interesting choices with the overall effect here. So if I move this layer over this side a little bit, 
Let me get this one a little bit closer. So you can reveal more of that. You can even scale it. You know, you can have them di the individual sizes. I'm going to make this one a lot larger. In fact, you know what? I'm going to select this one and make it a lighter font or a lighter version of the font. So you can use the type characteristics to manipulate these uh, these various shape elements. So again, just something to think about when you're experimenting with uh, with various typefaces. Now again, I'm just using very simple um, text objects here in the case of uh, the letters V and just getting creative with their positioning. But if I have them overlap there, you can see now we're getting something rather interesting here. And because of the angles of it, we're getting a, a, um, a rather interesting result there. So again, just something to think about when it comes to layer styles and stroke elements, uh, that you can create these various layers and then manipulate them so that you get this kind of, you know, like I said, you know, almost has resembles a glass effect. So if you experimented with it a little bit more, uh, you could probably get it to where you have this kind of really cool glass effect. And I'll turn one layer off and you can see how they individually might interact with each other. But again, a lot of fun to experiment with. And now you can see how you might uh, experiment with other images. Um, you, and you can certainly apply other images to the strokes within this style. For instance, if we go back into the layer style here, and let's just say one of these stroke elements, unfortunately you can't relabel them. So you got to kind of turn them off and on just to know which one is what. Let's see what this one is. That's that one. So let's say we wanted to put a different photo in that particular shot. Uh, we'll take this and uh, just for the sake of choosing, we'll just you know, let's choose this one here. So I can have another, another image interacting in there. So you could, uh, in, in theory, have images of the same subject but in different poses and you just create this kind of overall um, overlapping effect where it's just revealing different parts of the subject inside there. So let's move that back right over there. But again it's always a live layer style so that no matter what position you put the elements in it's always going to update that style and allow you to manipulate it in any way you want. So giving you very interesting results using layer styles. Now in this exercise, we're going to explore blending text elements by way of lighting effects. Um, and we're not going to use any 3D. Um, what we're going to be doing is creating text elements. In this case, we're going to do a couple of numbers um, that are going to act as illuminated objects in our scene. And they're actually going to interact with our subject in the sense that they're going to create edge lighting on our subject around the hair and on the, um, the subject's uh, shoulders and such like that. All uh, creating that artificially uh, using simple layer styles and a few other layer techniques. Um, so let's begin by first uh, selecting the subject and then say, extracting it to a new layer. Um, now, in the past, tackling this kind of uh, a selection would have just been a nightmare uh, from the get-go. But these days, selections have come a very long way. So we're just going to go to the select menu and go down here and choose subject. And it does a really good job of creating that selection. In fact, it does it so well. Um, and the fact that we're going to be keeping the subject on a darker background, uh, I'm not even going to use the Refine Edge uh, feature, but I'm press Command and Control J. And just turning this off, look how good that did, especially around the area of the hair, um, just creating that initial selection. All right. So that's looking really good. All right. Now let's go ahead and introduce our text elements that we're going to be using in here. And I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to use the font I've been using. We'll just use this one. Be sure to, of course, experiment with uh, whatever font you might want to use. I'm going to go with a little bit thicker font here. And I'm going to put it behind that layer. And let's scale it up quite a bit. We want it to have, we want to position these elements where they're going to be, you know, behind the subject. We also want to make sure we hit strategic areas of the subject where the light's going to be hitting it like here on the shoulder, right where it meets the edge there. And then up here in the hair, that's going to be a good area too. And then I'm going to, I'm going to make a duplicate of this uh, number layer. Just going to hold down the option key and drag and drop over. And we'll just, I'm just going to do 25. I don't know why 25. I just, I just like the way the five and the two look, I guess. Um, so we're going to do that and position that right there. So these are becoming part of the scene, but we want to make it feel like 
um, ultimately feel like that uh, the two and the five were actually LED lamps that were on the set during the photo shoot, just to kind of give it that realistic uh, um, look and feel to it. So um, let's start with the two over here and start adding some uh, some styling to it. So I'm going to go and double click on the layer and let's start by adding an inner glow. Now it's it's going to remember the the settings I used uh, previously, so we'll just go through it. Um, I'm using a, I want, I want the light to be a blue, uh, essentially like a blue LED. So I'm using this kind of deep blue color here, make it a little bit lighter there. Um, notice I've got the blend mode set to linear add dodge. Now this works great for this background, um, as you'll see in a little bit, but um, depending on the color texture object you're looking, you're working with, you might want to experiment with, uh, with other ones as well, just to see what you like. Uh, I'm going to keep it on the edge here. And let's get that color up there. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to go and add the outer glow. And it's pretty much the same thing. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go back to that inner glow and change that. You know, we're not seeing it on the white background, I just noticed. And that's because on this particular one, I want the blend mode to be hard light. There we go. Um, so we're still using that same blue, and we've got the opacity 100%, but the hard light gives me that kind of um, hot, a little hot spot in the center to make it feel like it's an illuminated um, object there. Now in that outer glow, that one I definitely want to have in linear uh, linear add or linear dodge add because it works well on this background. Again, experiment with your own. But um, the settings here, the opacity at 100%. Notice the size I've got rather large because I want to get a nice uh, illuminated glow coming off of that. And again, this is a layer style. We can always come back and adjust this later on. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK for that one. And let's turn this layer back on. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the other text object. Now, since we're going to be using the same style, well, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this style to the uh, existing one. So if you just grab the FX icon here, hold down the Option key, Alt on Windows, and just drag it to the target layer, it'll copy and paste that style. Uh, quickly and easily. All right, so now let's start creating the light effects that are going to help this interact with the scene here. Now, on the very top of the layer stack, I'm selecting the extracted subject. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and I want to go ahead and clip this layer inside of the subject layer. So I'm going to press Option Command G, and that will uh, create a clipping group there. Now I'm also going to change the blend mode of this layer to Overlay. And what we're going to do is just grab our gradient tool using foreground to transparent, like I always do. I'm going to make sure I set my foreground color to white. So press D, then X. And uh, there we have that. Now, what I'm going to do is go over to the areas where the subject is <clears throat> close to the light or where the light actually is right on the edge of it and just draw out a gradient. And that's going to help me create a kind of glow around the subject. You might remember if you were... Um, watch the, the previous uh, Photoshop Summit, I did a similar thing with the movie poster effect, uh, creating this kind of highlight effect. And we'll just add a little bit here. So notice that I'm coming, I'm using the gradient and coming in from the outside into the visible area here. And we'll just give a little bit of a glow on this shoulder here because that light would be, would be generating a little bit of a, a glare on that, maybe on this hand as well. A little bit on this hair, maybe up high as well. Wouldn't be so much, it would dissipate as it goes down, so we're not going to worry about too much of this area down here. I think that looks good. And that's just kind of laying the groundwork uh, for our highlighted areas. You can notice the difference there. It's already uh, starting to make a huge difference. All right, so now let's go in and start detailing the edge lighting effect. So in the in my layers panel here, I'm going to start by going in and making an active selection of our subject again. Remember how we did that by holding down the command key and click directly on the layer thumbnail, loads an active selection. I'm going to zoom in there a little, a little bit. Now, make sure you have any of the selection tools active, whether it's the marquee tool or um, the lasso tool, but you want to make sure you have a selection tool active because we only want to nudge the selection itself and not the image. So with that selected, I'm actually going to hold down my shift key and hit the right arrow and then hit the down arrow a few times just to kind of offset it um, that way a little bit. Now, notice what happened here is we go in close. We've got now the selection is offset from the subject, so we've got a little bit of this area on the left side exposed here, and then it's kind of going over off the edge over here. So that's what we want. So I'm gonna zoom back out here. So once we have that selection nudged over, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer at the very top of the layer stack. Go to the select menu and choose inverse. 
and then you're gonna fill the selection as it is with white. So I'm gonna press Option Delete since white is my foreground color, and there it is. Looks looks like it fills the whole background, but it's offset the subject a little bit. Now go back and reselect or reactivate the selection of the subject. Again, Command Click on the layer thumbnail, and again we're still working on that that topmost layer here. So again, go to Select, choose Inverse, and this time hit Delete. Now what should remain is that area that we um, had a, um, offset right in there and it's on the along the edge there. So I turn that on and off. Basically it's a stroke element going along the edge of the subject. So now I'm gonna put a blur on that. Let's go to the filter menu, go to blur, Gaussian blur. Let's keep it rather small. Uh, let's go like a three pixel blur I think. That looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the existing layer style we've already got applied to the numbers up there. So I'm just gonna get again Hold down the Option key, grab the FX icon, and drag it to the target layer, which is this glow here. There it is. Now, the outer glow element of this works really well. However, I don't need the inner glow, so I'm actually going to turn that part of it off. And obviously, it's covering more area than it needs to. So in order to bring it back selectively, let's hold down the Option key and click the layer mask icon to hide everything on the layer. Now we'll zoom back in here. I'm going to use my the same gradient tool I used before, radial foreground to transparent with white set as my foreground color. And then we're just going to go in here and just next to those areas where the light is, we're just going to drag the gradient out and reveal the light effect. And you get this kind of natural glow around the areas of the subject where you'd expect that light to be affecting it. So it really helps sell the, the fact that the... Uh, that light may actually be in the scene there. I'm going to change the blend mode of the layer itself. You can try other blend modes just to help, you know, get that highlighted area. So I'll, um, overlay looks pretty good, I think. So we're getting that nice glow there. Everything's looking really good. So something to, something to play around with. It's a really uh, fun effect to uh, to really help sell an element that wasn't there in the original shoot. Now, uh, let's do the edge light to the other side, of course, uh, going through the same thing. Essentially, we're going to do the opposite. So I'm going to command click, load the selection, hold down the shift key. This time I'm hitting the left arrow. I'm going to do it a couple of times and then nudge down a little bit. Maybe just adjust that. And again, we'll go select inverse. And we're going to do a new layer. Don't forget that. So we're going to keep this element on its own layer. So each side of the edge lighting will have their own layer. That's another great benefit of this is that you can uh, you can modify each side. Um, so in the event, I'm not going to do it here, but in the event you wanted to make one, uh, make, make for instance, wanted to make the number five a different color light, uh, then you could change the edge lighting on this side to reflect that. So a uh, lot of options when it comes to that. Um, so I've inverted it, uh, I've got my new layer, I'm gonna fill it with white, and again, deselect, and we'll reselect the original subject, select inverse, hit delete, and there's that edge element. Again, we'll run the blur, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll just take the layer style from the one we just adjusted. We turned off the inner glow already, so it should pick it up okay, there it is. Man, that looks good, let's see, let's see how, so that's getting this nice little blue glow along the edge there. But again, we don't need all of that, so we're going to um, option, click the layer mask to hide it, and then we can just now selectively, and I'm using the gradient tool, feel free to use the brush tool, whatever you feel is comfortable, if you want to target specific areas of light to bring back in, but what I like about the gradient is that areas that are closer to the light source, in this case the, the lettering, you can reveal more to make it brighter, and then areas that are further away, you can keep it more distant to make the light kind of fade out. Like here on the shoulder, it's gonna be really bright, so I'm gonna really push that light in there and maybe along the edge here. We're definitely right, right along the hand there, more of the light right there. Just helps um, really get the effect across. Let's again change that uh, blend mode to overlay so it interacts in there, there we go. Maybe reveal a bit more of the, the type element up there. And now that pretty much is it. Now one more thing I'm going to do, just to kind of um, mess, play with the depth of the scene a little bit more, is I'm going to take that number five and put it above the subject right here, so that the effect is kind of coming out in front of her. Maybe add a little bit more bright gradient right here 
on this, uh, remember this layer we got grouped, that we grouped earlier and it's got it in overlay mode. I'm gonna add a couple more gradients um, right underneath that five. So it really looks like the light's being cast um, behind her or behind the five right onto her. So it's really uh, helping to sell that light effect a little bit more though. And uh, of course, remember your elements are still live fonts. So if I wanted to go in here and you know do something as simple as change the weight of the font, maybe I want it to be really bold, maybe go a hell of a lot thinner just to get you know something a little bit more stylized in there. Uh, depending on what you what you change it to would probably require you adjusting the layer style, but that's a very simple adjustment to make. And uh, you can just adjust it and then go right along with it. So like in this case, I'm gonna lessen the size of that inner glow a little bit so I can get a little bit more highlight because it is a thinner font there. But I like the way that looks. You know, it's got the thinner and then the larger one up front here. When you're blending uh, elements that weren't there in the actual photo shoot, but uh, these edge lighting techniques are very effective in being able to help sell uh, whatever's in the scene and actually uh, being able to make it look like it's actually put in there. So just remember that edge lighting, uh, uh, that that selection and offset technique, does take a couple of times to to get the practice down to it right, but it definitely yields a very impressive effect in the end to give you a really believable edge lighting effect. Now, of course, I couldn't leave you without doing at least a little something in 3D. Now, this is a really cool effect, and uh, don't worry if you don't really know 3D that well. It's very easy to follow along, uh, but it gives you a really cool result and something you'll really want to experiment with uh, once you know, once you see how it's put together. Um, but what we're going to do is take this floating girl, and we're going to put her in a scene where she's floating amongst some letters that spell the word float. So, how appropriate. I know. Um, but it's a very cool um, way of using 3D to help the text kind of interact with the subject in a way that would be very time consuming to do um, in 2D and would be very definitive because you wouldn't have a lot of options as far as the angles because uh, the, the limitations of, uh, of a 2D environment. Um, so the first thing is we need to extract this subject from the background. So I'm just going to go to the select menu. We're going to go ahead and choose subject. It's going to go ahead and select it. Now, normally I would just extract it to a new layer, but since we're going to be making a 3D um, object out of this, we're going to need to go ahead and copy it and then bring it to a new layer, or a new document rather, and create the extrusion. Now, the reason we need to do that is that when it creates a 3D object, it uses the entire image area as the front face texture of the object. So all this excess area would kind of offset the texture. So we need to go ahead and do it in a document that's at the exact size of the subject. So we've got it selected. I'm going to press Command C, Control C on Windows to copy it to the clipboard. Create a new document. It will remember the dimensions in that. So we'll just paste it in there. So now you see the subject is going right to the edges all around. And then we're just going to go ahead and create a 3D object. And we're going to do it as an extrusion in this case, just so it will interact with the other objects uh, a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to go to the 3D menu, go down here and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And we don't need, obviously, the extrusion itself, but I'm going I'm to go in here and adjust that depth. So just double click on the layer one in the 3D panel to open up the properties panel. And just bring this down to one. doesn't even need to be that. And the reason I'm not doing a, a 3D postcard is that it does, the uh, postcard doesn't really interact with the light the right way uh, as good as um, an extruded object does. So this will work just fine. All right, so now um, everything's lining up uh, because we created a document of the same size. So now we're gonna bring this one back into our working image in just a second, but let's move that to the side for now. So back in our original document, we're gonna create a new background color we want it uh, we want to use the same kind of color gradient here but uh, want to make sure the subject is gone so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and then we'll just sample some colors here or actually no you know what make it easier just make a duplicate of the background layer and since since that background color is the dominant color of the image when we go to filter and go down here to blur and choose average it'll just blur it to that color and then I'm going to add a, another layer. Just use this old trick I used for 
background. So we'll just add the gradient using the same color and then we'll just change it to screen and that gives us a little bit of a, a highlighted background there. Quick and easy. All right, so let's go back and bring our 3D object back into this document. So I'm going to grab the layer itself. When you're transferring 3D objects, you need to grab the layer itself. I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag it over and it will land in there. Now we will use our 3D tools, select the move tool. And up here, we've got our 3D tools up here in the options bar. So we're just going to take our current view and let's just slide it over, bring our subject into the middle of the frame. We'll dra um, use this to slide the camera closer or further away and position it right about there. Notice we've got a shadow being cast and that is being cast by the infinite light. If I were to move that light around, there is that, sh uh, that shadow being cast there. Looks good. We'll get to those details in a moment, but now let's create a text layer. I'm gonna go ahead and select my text tool and let's set our text and we'll just do the word float. And yes, I'm using Futura again. I was gonna use a different font. I promise I was, but then I found out this font works perfectly for this effect um, because of the the ring of the the zero. It's going to work perfectly for what uh, for what this is. So just going to go ahead and leave it at that. So I'm going to go ahead and center the text and actually let's center it horizontally and vertically. There we go. And then we're going to actually go ahead and create an extrusion of the text here. So uh, we're going to go to 3D, new 3D extrusion, selected layer. Gets an extrusion and let's bring up our 3D and properties panels, again, both located under the window menu. Um, I've got the word float here, the object float selected in the 3D panel. We're gonna go over here and adjust the extrusion depth. Let's bring that down to about 50. And that looks good. And I think everything looks good there. Let's just raise it up a little bit here. And what I wanna do now is that go ahead and merge it with the layer of the subject just below there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press command, command or control E going to merge it down and now we've got that subject of the text and the subject on the same layer as you see if I just rotate this around what's going on there that that result actually is actually kind of cool in and of itself but now let's grab the text object notice here in the 3d panel even though they're merged and together in one layer in the, in the layers panel we can still manipulate them individually here in the 3d panel so with the float object selected. I'm going to use the widget here just to bring it forward and just click and drag down with that front arrow highlighted. So that brings the text forward there. Now what I want to do is actually reposition each letter around the subject so that um, they're just kind of in a different way utilizing the 3D space. But we need to break it apart in order to do that. So with that object selected in the 3D panel, go up here to the 3D menu and then go down here and choose split extrusion. And it's going to go ahead and break it apart. Now, in some cases, it'll shift the position a little bit. So that's just a matter of just going and using the widget to move it back in place. But you'll notice over here, now it's broken it into, you can still manipulate the group. So it's kind of put it in a group folder. But now we can uh, manipulate the object as one thing. And then we can go in here and select each individual letter and manipulate it as well. So in, in the case of this L here, what I want to do is, use the widget to scale it up. I'm gonna highlight the arrow, push that back in space and nudge it down, scale it up a lot bigger than that. And it's just a matter of going into each letter, just selecting each one and scaling and positioning them in the scene here. Now this one I wanna put right at her feet, something like that. I'm gonna take the O here, I'm gonna do something really cool with that. I'm just gonna rotate its side here so it's kind of wrapping around her in the 3D space there. Still can make out that it's the O, but we're using it in a rather creative way. I'm gonna push this A behind the subject and scale that up quite a bit. So now you're designing in three dimensions. You're, you know, your, your text is now interacting with the environment that your subject is in. And, and it gives you an, a, new, a new perspective on how to put the, um, all the scenes together like that. Um, now, I certainly could play with this a lot, but I think that gives the idea. Now, the lighting, let's adjust that a little bit. I'm going to take my, uh, my infinite light is a little bright. So what I'm going to do is actually turn that into a spotlight. So with it selected, I'm going to go over here to my properties panel and let's change this to spot. 
and we're just going to use our 3D tools to reposition the light. You can see the much more dramatic lighting that a spotlight gives me and just use my 3D tools to reposition it. I'm going to increase the cone size here. So yeah, I'm just using the 3D tools to, and then manip manipulating the lights does take a little practice, but once you get the hang of it, you can uh, achieve some really dramatic lighting effects that you would normally not be able to do. I'm actually, see, I'm just going to position this a little bit higher. And let's have the shadow be a little bit softer as it comes on off the uh, subject there. So I'm going to go in here in the properties panel and for this light, let's set the softness at about 15. And it's going to go ahead and leave my environment light like that. Now let's reposition our subject here or the overall camera. It's a little bit like that. Let's start the render and see. I think it's going to be a little bright. We might need, we need to adjust that, but yeah. So I got to adjust the position of my uh, spotlight here. Let's go ahead and just reset its position. So these buttons here, point in origin and move, move to view, will reposition the light, uh, allowing us to basically start over with the position. Because I want to get it up high, something like that. There we go. Now let's widen the cone a little bit so it gives a little bit more light over on the scene. And we'll zoom in and see what we've got going on with that. Let's start a render and see. So that's looking really good. Now, as I mentioned before, when the render starts, it has this graininess to it. And it's going to get a lot more refined as it progresses through the render there. Um, but I think um, probably going to do with adjusting the light a little bit here. Let's uh, maybe dial it down a stop. I can actually see I'm going to need to adjust. See that? This is where it helps to zoom in a little bit. You can see where it's kind of the, that O is kind of cutting into her there. Let's push that back a little bit. There we go. Maybe even scale it up a little bit. It can stand to be bigger. And I think that will work. I'm going to go and initiate the render one last time. And yeah, I'm going to go and let that run through. But there you, there you have it. It's just a very interesting way of utilizing text and the 3D features to create and augment the scenes that you've already shot. You know, in this case, you've got a subject that's just on a, a gen generic background and you can add these elements to make it really feel like it was a part of the set when it was being shot. So you can actually not only create the elements and place them in the 3D space along with the subject, you can manipulate the lights to create a, um, um, a whole studio atmosphere uh, in just a matter of minutes. Well, thank you very much for joining my session today. If you want to find out more about what I'm doing, you can check me out at facebook.com slash ps 3 d Same for Instagram and my training website, masterfxtraining.com. Thank you once again. We'll see you next time.